this is Synth Chaser with SynthChaser.com. Welcome back. In this video series, we've been restoring an ARP Omni 1, and uh, we are down to the last three circuit boards that we need to, to service. These are the ones with the sliders and the buttons. So this is the synthesizer board that uh, makes the synthesizer sound of the keyboard. This little uh, circuit board that's, uh, that's attached there is the uh, voltage controlled filter. It's a 4075 VCF submodule. Uh, earlier submodules were encapsulated in uh, either epoxy or silicone caulk, and this one is just uh, it's just uh, not encapsulated. So you can just desolder it, and then you can access the the components from from the other side. So what we're going to be doing on this board is we're going to be replacing the sliders. Um, in another video, I, I disassemble the sliders and and clean them. Uh, here, we're going to make this ARP Omni really, really cool, and we're going to replace this with my LED slider kit. Um, while we're doing that, we're going to change this off-amp, since it's going to get covered up by the slider assembly. We're going to remove the voltage-controlled filter, and we're going to correct its uh, cutoff frequency. So the original design uh, had a mistake that limited the frequency response to about 12 kilohertz. So we're going to correct that by um, installing a kit that I sell on my website. And then we're also going to remove and, and replace these uh, tantalum capacitors. Um, this is the uh, string control board. And we're going to also replace this with, this, with the LED slider assembly. We're going to replace the capacitors. And uh, while I'm in here, I'm going to change these two ICs. This is the uh, analog switch and an op amp. These are very common failures. And while I have the board out, I'm just going to replace it. Uh, similar with the uh, synthesizer control board here, I'm going to replace the tantalum capacitors. There's a little red one here, and I'm going to uh, change the op amps uh, and the uh, analog switch here. So since we talked about the sliders, uh, now would be a good time for you to mention what options you'd have for restoring your sliders. Uh, first option, uh, I'll put it out there, although I totally don't recommend it, is just to spray it with contact cleaner. And what that's going to do is that's going to take any loose dirt that's in there and move it to ends of the wipers, um, I mean to the ends of the sliders, where you may lose contact um, when you have the slider pushed to one extreme. Uh, but the dirt's not going to come out and uh, the, the metal conductive track isn't going to get clean and shiny. Um, and I'll actually uh, be making another video uh, where I take some, some dirty sliders and I uh, show you the difference between uh, spraying it with contact cleaner and, uh, and actually doing the second option, which would be to, to remove them and disassemble them and, and clean them. And I showed that in a, in a previous video and I'll show that in another video dedicated to just sliders. Um, third option, uh, well that, that option of disassembling and, and the sliders and cleaning them is definitely the most time consuming. Um, it takes me about 10 to 15 minutes to do each slider um, and you know I have experience doing it um, you know and that time does include testing the sliders uh, once you reassemble them to make sure that they they're clean and they function properly. Uh, the third option is to replace them so I sell um, on my website synthchaser.com uh, kits of replacement sliders, so these look and, and function just like the original sliders, except they're brand new. Um, so that that's an option is to replace all those with uh, with uh, new r replacement sliders. And the fourth option, which we're, which is what we're going to do on this one, is I sell a kit that has uh, precision LED sliders. So I'm going to remove all these sliders, and then this assembly we'll just fit in to where the old sliders came out. I'll solder it into place and hook it up to the power. And these sliders, uh, they're much smoother and more precise than the originals. Um, everyone who has, uh, has gotten one of these kits from me or, or bought one of the keyboards where I've installed it has commented that, that they really feel nice. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing on this one is we're going to be replacing it with the uh, LED sliders. Um, uh, I think this ARP Omni we're going to do in blue. I haven't done a blue one yet, so let's do a blue one. Um, I'll also give you some quick tips for removing these sliders. Uh, you can damage them uh, if you're planning on cleaning them or, or want to keep them as spares. 
uh, it's helpful to get them off intact. And the way that you get them off is turn the board over and then there's these little tabs and you need to uh, twist them back so they're straight. And then a little piece of metal, a little uh, bit of metal will be hanging over and you clip it. So uh, uh, and be sure to wear eye protection because it will go flying all over. Uh, and then what you do is with these uh, flat nose pliers is, well, you desolder the three three connections and then you grab the tab and you push it through the board instead of trying to pull it from the top. If you try to pull it from the top, you'll damage it. So you push it through the bottom uh, with the ta from the tabs. Here are the boards with uh, the sliders and other components removed. So the synthesizer board is here. The sliders were down here. Took this op amp out here, which I'm going to replace. Um, took the VCF sub-module out and uh, I'm uh, doing the filter enhancement to that. While I had it out, since the uh, the quad op amp that's on there sometimes fails, I've, uh, I'm going to replace that. Just because it's uh, easier to do it now than after I solder this back here and reinstall this in the keyboard. Uh, on the switchboards, the synthesizer control board on the top and the string control board on the bottom, I found one capacitor that wasn't even soldered into place. It had been uh, moved from the top to the bottom of the board and uh, it looked kind of weird and I just kind of touched it and it fell out. So that's I think the first time I've seen a component not soldered into place when working on one of these. Um, but the sliders are out. Uh, I took the integrated circuits out and um, that I'm going to be changing. And uh, the next step is going to be to clean these boards up. There's a lot of dust on them flux residues and uh, so giving giving the areas I'm going to be soldering to a good cleaning with denatured alcohol is going to make the soldering go much easier and uh, prevent there from being any damage to the boards when I reinstall the parts. So here's the pile of parts that I took out, the big pile of sliders, some chips, uh, capacitors and resistors. And then here's the stuff that's going in. The replacement chips are going to be socketed uh, for ease of future maintenance and uh, the capacitors that I took out are going to be replaced and then the uh, sliders are being replaced with my LED slider kit. So I'm going to clean up these boards and put that stuff in and I'll check back with you. And just a short while later all the uh, the boards are complete and ready to go back into the case. So one annoying thing about the ARP Omni 1, which I'll save you a lot of time potentially, uh, is uh, are, are these screw holes. Um, this one in particular on the string control board there's traces very close to the uh, to the uh, screw hole. So you put the screw in and you wind up shorting a bunch of stuff. So uh, when you take your screws off no doubt you're going to throw them all in a little bin and uh, at the end of it you're going to be left with one with a little rubber washer on there. Well this is this is where it goes. So now hopefully that saves some people some time. And one final thing we'll do before we uh, reassemble everything and fire it up is uh, restore the key bed. This key bed's pretty level. There's some gaps here between the keys which we can even out. The keys are a little dirty so we'll wash them. And there's a, there's a damaged key here and then uh, this one is cracked up here causing it to have this kind of uh, sound. So we're going to do the bushings, uh, replace the bushings. We're going to level out the key bed, try to correct the spacing here. Uh, wash the keys, uh, clean the bus bar, and uh, overall get this thing feeling great. So I turned the key bed over to clean the bus bar, which you see is uh, nice and shiny now. And uh, what I noticed is that uh, some of the uh, the J wires, these are this is what uh, what moves and makes contact with the the bus bar when you press a key. One. Uh, two of them are, are broken off and missing. So I've got some donor J wires here and uh, to re replace these what you would do is you would solder that to this point here uh, where it makes contact. And then uh, fortunately these little these little caps were were stuck down there in the key bed so, uh, so I don't have to use replacements for that. So I'll solder those in and then this keyboard should be good as new. We've got the key bed back together, uh, new bushings, key bed is leveled, key contacts cleaned and adjusted. Replaced uh, the damaged keys and then also as I washed them I found that, that some of these had been cracked and kind of glued back together and uh, when I soaked them, soaked them in the hot soapy water the glue kind of came undone 
and I was able to see that they were they were uh, not dirty but actually glued together so I replaced those as well I mean they could be glued back together but that's that's they'll break again and that's a cheesy fix so all the keys now are not damaged and uh, and should last a long time I'm hooking it back up I noticed there's some extra wires here on these jacks that I will remove so I've installed all the boards in the synthesizer, hooked everything up, and uh, tested everything out. And uh, for the most part, it's, it's everything is working. Um, the one problem that I'm going to be looking into is, is this. Right now I have on the uh, violin and uh, viola. And it does not sound quite right. And uh, I noticed the chorus... Chorus phaser button uh, doesn't seem to be doing anything, and as you saw, the LED there is kind of intermittent. So we're going to pull that switchboard out and have a have a look to see if we can figure out what the problem is. So using a multimeter, I uh, determined that the uh, switches, uh, the contacts inside, are dirty. Uh, the two in question uh, have very high resistance between the two. Uh, the two terminals on the back uh, here to the right of my thumb uh, whereas working switches uh, have a much lower resistance um, many people would be inclined just to squirt contact cleaner at it um, I'm actually going to desolder these and uh, disassemble them a little bit and, and clean them up so I wound up changing four of the buttons there. Uh, two of the ones that were there had a hard time latching. So a lot of the times the latch on, uh, on the Omni One buttons uh, breaks. Uh, and then there were two that were, were dirty when I tested them out of circuit. And I just replaced them with four ones from another uh, Omni. Um, I'll have to come up with a solution for the uh, switches um, uh, when I get down to that, that last Omni that's going to be missing all its switches. But uh, the uh, sound, um, the switches now engage and they light up as they should, but the sound, it still doesn't sound like the, the violin here that I'd expect. So uh, the next area that we would look at is the phaser, because that's responsible for that, that nice string sound um, that you would expect from this string ensemble or omni. Uh, so there's three delay lines. Uh, this is a schematic for the phaser board. And each one, uh, I'm going to work my way back from the end, and I'm going to look at the output. So there's an op amp at the end of that. So um, this is delay line one, this is delay line two, this is delay line three. And this is the output op amp here at the top. So I'm going to look at pin six, which is the output. Oops, slipped off there. So I'm getting output from delay line one. Uh, I'm going to look at delay line 2, and I get nothing. I'm looking at delay line 3, and I get nothing. So two of the three delay lines are, are not working, and that's probably why uh, it sounds the same whether we have the, the delay turned on, the phaser turned on or off. So now I'm going to work my way back. Uh, the next step is the uh, analog delay chip. So I'm going to actually skip over this and move down to the next one, which is a flip-flop. So I'm going to look at the output of the flip-flop, which is uh, pin 2. So first I'm going to look at the working line. And uh, so I've got this, this uh, toggling and slightly oscillating uh, waveform here. So I'm going to look at the one on the delay line 2 and uh, that does not look right and I'm going to look at the one on delay line 3 and that doesn't look right. So let's look at the inputs. The inputs are on pin 3. So this is the input to the working delay line. Uh, this is the, the clock for the flip-flop that tells it to toggle. So let's look on uh, pin 3 of this next one. So this is going to be at a different different frequency, um, different timing than the other delay line, but it looks like the input to this flip-flop is correct, but the output is not correct. Let's look at the one on the third 
delay line. Also, this seems to be a correct uh, in clock input, uh, but we're getting no output. So, the uh, at least we know these two flip-flop chips, the CD4013 on these two delay lines, this one here and this one here are bad. Interestingly, as I feel them, they feel much warmer than the uh, than the one that's working. So we're going to change those two uh, flip-flop chips and then retest the, the phaser. So I changed the two flip-flop chips on the, this delay line and this delay line. And uh, if you recall, the output of the working delay line looked like this. The timing we'd expect to be a little bit different. The pulse width we'd expect to be a little di bit different between each delay line. Now we'll go and we'll look at delay line number two. Uh, there we go. Could benefit from a uh, ceramic capacitor there to uh, get rid of that ringing, but they didn't include that on this. And, uh, and this other one. Um, the difference, the reason there's a difference in, uh, in that is that uh, the original chip is a uh, 4013AE and this uh, replacement chip is a 4013BE, a buffered chip, which uh, all chips today, all CMOS chips that are available are buffered. Um, so let's uh, see if this is working. Yeah, we're getting that sound that we'd expect to get. So let's go back and take a look at the output of the the delay line, the one that was working before. I have to change the time on this. Let's zoom in a little bit more. A little bit more. So that was a working delay line before, and this one was, the second one was dead. Now it's working, and the third one was dead, and now it's working. Uh, so that's why we now have the strings back. We fixed the phaser. And it's no surprise that the phaser had issues because if you recall in the first part of the video, when we first opened the keyboard, the uh, power supply was plugged directly into the phaser. So no doubt uh, these chips uh, um, suffered quite a bit from that. And uh, we're, we're actually quite fortunate that only these two common chips have failed, not like the analog delay or anything like that. So now I'm going to hook up the power to the LED sliders and close up the case and we should be done. So here's the completed product with uh, very, very bright blue LEDs. So that's the, the big sound with all the uh, switches on. I'll turn off the, uh, the synthesizer sound so it's just the strings. Uh, and now we'll just do the synth. I wish I could play better to give you a better demonstration, but uh, this will have to do. So this is all done and uh, ready for someone to, to make some good music with. Uh, this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Thanking you for watching. If you have any questions about restoring or repairing ARP Omnis or other vintage synthesizers, please post in the comments or send me a message through my website, SynthChaser.com. Hopefully this video series helped you and uh, thanks for watching.